friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Welcome to uh, Code Wars, Code Katas, episode 44? I think it's 44. Well, we're gonna break things down, one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. We're gonna break things down, one step at a time. We're gonna solve these katas, you and I. Welcome to the show. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the new loading screen, um, which I'm, I'm going to go there for just like a split second because it's like the DVD loading Yeah, it's great. Okay. <laughs> welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, somebody mentioned that the timer was going up. It was actually negative. There was a negative sign at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, and I got that from Fun Fun Function. He has a timer at the beginning of his show. But welcome to the show. If you're new to this, you can visit uh, github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas. All of the code from the previous episodes is here, and all the code that I write today will be here as well. If you're new to Code Wars, you can go to codewars.com to check it out. Uh, but this is basically a code challenge website with user-submitted code problems uh, where you can practice coding. Um, and they have many different languages. I typically use JavaScript. Um, and they have many different difficulties, ranging from very easy, like 8Q, all the way up to 1Q, which is very hard. Uh, this morning, we are going to take it somewhat easy. We're going to go medium, medium level di difficulty this morning. Um, so if you go to the GitHub repo, there is an e issues uh, tab. And if you have a suggestion for a kata for me to solve, you can submit an issue there, and I'll take a look at it. Uh, last time, we, take, we took a look at these submissions from Depopom. And this morning, I'm going to take a look at these 6Q um, submissions. And 6Q is about medium difficulty. Um, maybe, I would say, like, medium easy. A little, not exactly super medium, but maybe a little bit easier than that. And we might actually get warmed up with a 7Q. So if you have a suggestion for a 7Q, feel free to throw it in the chat. And uh, let's get into this. Welcome, everyone. I should start a music career. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, it would be, I would be uh, less, less, way less lucrative. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be able to live the life that I live, I think, if I was a musician, but that's okay. And thanks for the, sh uh, the follow, ShopMim. And let's say hello to everyone. If you'd like to say hello to me, uh, say hello, <laughs> the word hello, because this, this will detect the word hello. Uh, and we're going to get started in two minutes. Guten Morgen. <laughs> oh, Gluten Morgan. <laughs> that's good. Um... Uh, yeah, so we'll get started in two minutes. Let's say hello to all the wonderful people. And hello, Aretta. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Christian. Hello, David. Uh, hello, Xerxes. Hello, Adam. Hello, Dean. Hello, uh, Aid Bowale. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> and what's up, Dr. Huk uh, Dr. Hakuna? Welcome back. Hello, Mustafa. And hello, Dean. And Ali. And Nicholas. And Kevin. And Sid. And uh, Angel from Nicaragua. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I should start a music career. No. Um, I thought about streaming music on Twitch. That would be fun to do. Because I do play a lot of instruments, so yeah. And hello, makes sense. Welcome. Uh, Aboft says, I just started using the Connect driver yesterday. I can't find the docs anywhere, but I need to release a connection on grabbing the result. Or does it do it on its own? Um, you can disconnect it. <laughs> I can talk about that in a second. Let's say hello to everyone. Hello, Nicholas. Welcome. Hello, Pablo. Hello, Manu. Um, and hello, Cheyenne, who says, should I practice data structures and algorithms if I want to get a job as a web developer? It really depends. It really depends. I'll leave your message there, and we'll address that after we say hello. But uh, it depends on what kind of company are you trying to get hired at, what kind of a web development job you want to have. But yeah. And hello, Kuhn. Hello, Tesser. Hello, uh, uh, Dagukan. <laughs> welcome. And hello, boy. Welcome. Uh, yeah, Coding Pasta. Welcome to Code Katas. And I... The tentative plan is that this morning we're going to do like six and seven Q problems, and then this evening we are going to try and solve the one Q tiny three pass compiler. It's going to be our final go at it, and we're actually going to get it. That's the plan. <laughs> hello, Hork. Welcome. And hello, Doc. What about finishing <laughs> this evening? That's the plan, this evening. And hold me to it, Doc. Just send me a message. Like, you got to do this, and we'll do it. Hello, Wasabi. Hello, Trent. Hello, Adrian. Uh, hello, Philippe. Hello, Turd. <laughs> hello, Facundo. And B. And Palin TV. Welcome. And uh, Prakash. Welcome. And hello, uh, Richie. And Erwin, who says, I have a problem with feathers in Vuex. Feathers.service.event.listener from Refugius View keeps opening. I have never heard of that. <laughs> if you join our Discord, I can try to help you debug. And hello, Yes, Sir. And hello, Amr. Um, Let's get started. Sid says, I'm 16 year old. 16 years old, how do I get started? Uh, probably the easiest way is something like Free Code Camp. Um, 
it is totally free and online, and uh, they have a really good, um, I would call it kind of a roadmap, because you can click any one of these things. Like, if you click on Responsive Web Design, this teaches you the basic of HTML and CSS. Um, there are a lot of other good resources out there on the internet, but this is laid out in a way where if you have no idea what you're doing, it gives you a good entry point. Um, so I would check out Free, free Code Camp. <laughs> Uh, greetings does not pass the greetings tab. No, we need to fix that. We talked about that in the past. Um, okay, Aboft is asking about closing the SQL connection. Check out um, connectjs.org and then um, look for connection here. So this creates the connection. Um, and the connection object, I believe, has a uh, close function. Let's see. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Join the Discord and I can try to help you out. Um, okay, and then this question, which is somewhat relevant because we're talking about code codis today. Um, should I practice data structures and algorithms if I want a job as a web developer? Um, so if you are getting a job as a front-end web developer where you're really only going to be doing basic HTML and CSS, I won't, not, let's not say basic because you do have a job in it. Let's say you're doing HTML and CSS and a little bit of front-end JavaScript it actually, you don't really use it that much. And I would say even in my job as a full stack engineer, um, on a daily basis, I don't ever have to like reverse a binary tree or something like that. Um, however, um, if you're trying to get a, a software engineering job at the types of companies that ask those kinds of questions, then you absolutely need to practice those things. But companies differ. I've interviewed at companies where all I had to do was um, build a CRUD app to show that I knew um, how to build front end and back end. And that's all they required. It wasn't some weird whiteboarding thing. So it really depends, and it, it depends on the kind of company that you're applying to, too. And hello, Mashiko, welcome. And uh, Kapagnucci, welcome. And hello, one line of me. Yeah, and that's a good point, Christian. It's good for intellectual practice. So I myself got a computer science degree, and um, in my subconscious, I know a lot about uh, data structures and algorithms and, and big O notation and runtime and things like that. But in my daily life, I wouldn't say I have to use it directly. But it most likely informs a lot of the decisions I make about what array method to use or how to code something on the front end. Um, so yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I missed a bunch of chats, but that's okay. We're going to get started. <laughs> Did I say hello to all those people? I think I might have. Oh, well, if you asked a question, feel free to ask it again. <laughs> oh, hey, Annabeth. Yeah, this thing doesn't detect hey. That's unfortunate. I need to detect the word hey. <laughs> Where can I learn some JavaScript? Free Code Camp is a good place to go. Ideas for college projects. Look for Florin Pop on YouTube, and he has a video on like 80 different projects you can do. Uh, Moshiko says, I'm I prefer learning JavaScript through videos and not through documentation. Yeah, a lot of uh, new programmers are that way, and that's totally fine. But eventually, eventually, you got to start learning from docs and stuff like that. And welcome, Alka. Hello, hello. <laughs> Um, yeah, jo jo join the Discord, and later on I can take a look and see if I can find it. It's definitely possible, because you have like a connection pool where you can determine how many um, connections are allowed, that kind of thing. An interesting kata called Omnibool. Uh, do you know what queue it is, David? Let's see. Code Wars. Omnibool. Uh, Thurs says, having failed to get a web developer job for a long time, I can tell you, all you have to know is everything. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on where you're interviewing, but uh, it can be a very daunting task if you are trying to uh, get a job as a web developer, um, especially depending on what kind of companies you apply to, but yeah. Is it difficult to learn a programming language? It depends. Um, I would say I myself have a very logical mind. Um, I've always liked math <laughs> and logic, but you don't have to be that way to be a good programmer. You just have to learn to think that way. Um, and someone that is that way um, doesn't necessarily have a leg up, but they're used to thinking in that way because programming is extremely logical and extremely, um, I guess, what's what, what words am I looking for? Um, yeah, so you don't have to know a lot of math. You don't have to be really good at those things. You can learn to do those things. But that kind of mindset is what you need to solve coding problems and to, to, to learn programming in general. Um, hopefully, I said that in an OK way. But I, I do believe that anyone can learn to program. You just have to be in the right mindset. I don't believe there's a certain type of person that programming is fit for. I, I do believe anyone can at least learn the basics and, and the basics idea of logic and, and critical thinking. 
Welcome, Vitor. Thank you. Hey, Cheyenne. <laughs> Must have had a good sleep. Yeah, I slept. Well, actually, I just woke up really early and took a lot of caffeine. So there we go. Um, what words does it recognize? I think it's just hey. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Fukundo. And uh, Vitor. And hello, Tractor. Welcome. How do I recommend to learn JavaScript? I mostly just watch a copy of the code from Udemy course. Um, I would say take a look at Free Code Camp because that's your first step in not using a video and, and having to write it yourself. You're still in the browser, um, which um, is a little bit different than the real world, but they have prescribed things that you can do, which will gradually build up your skills. So check out Free Code Camp. And hello, Brandon. And hello, Mahant. <laughs> Code Chef. Yeah, I've seen Code Chef before. Yeah. Omnibool. All right. Uh, I can't click links over here. <laughs> Somebody has a pull request on this. Sid is asking tabs or spaces. I use a, a two space tab. Um, yeah, two space tab. You need computational thinking <laughs> to use a buzzword. I like that. Uh, dynamic programming is also required for a web developer. It really depends. Some people have web development jobs where all they do is HTML and CSS, so you don't really have to do um, a JavaScript, which is more logical. Hello, Track. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Tyrone. Caffeine, the magic elixir, yeah. <laughs> I prefer to read a good book. I actually don't read that many books. Uh, I used to work as a .NET developer, yeah. And hello, one line of me. Um, just a bunch of random stuff to be at the greetings channel. Hello. <laughs> What's up, Bayon? Cool. All right. So let's see uh, this one that David suggested. It is a 6Q. Schrodinger's Boolean. <laughs> uh, can a value be both true and false? Define Omnibool so that it returns true for the following. Omnibool double equals true and Omnibool double equals false. Oh, that's like a tricky JavaScript problem. That sounds fun, though. I'll put it on the list. Um, and if no one has a 7Q suggestion, I'm just going to pick one. We're going to pick a random 7Q. We're going to sort by... So here's a quick tip if you're using Code Wars. Um, first, sort by most completed. So all of these problems are user submitted. So sometimes you can come across a problem that doesn't have a very good problem description and can be very hard to solve. So if you sort by most completed, you're looking at problems that most people have been able to complete, most likely because they can actually understand the directions. Um, and then next up... Uh, I'm going to choose katas I have not trained on. So these are things I've never seen before. I might have seen something like them, <laughs> but I've never seen these particular problems before. Um, and then also you can filter the difficulty on the left. Right now I'm filtered by 7Q. Um, and then we can filter by specific tags. And actually, let's filter by fundamentals. And then we'll go 7Q. 7Q fundamentals. This one keeps popping up. Should I do it? Deodorant evaporator. The first time I looked at it, it just looked so weird. I didn't want to approach it. It's probably easy enough to do. <laughs> and thanks for the follow, Toad Mecca. And hello, it's Flu. Welcome back. Hello, Mustafa. Uh, hot take. If you don't know data structures and algorithms, you'll be constantly working around that gap in your knowledge, and eventually you'll encounter problems you simply can't solve. I, I like that, Doc. Um, the, the thing is, front-end front web development is getting more and more complicated in that you're building these larger and larger applications that are just running inside the browser using a language that didn't used to be used in that way. Um, so you kind of have to worry about performance of uh, your JavaScript code. Um, so yes, you're absolutely right. And we can talk about this, this this morning when we're trying to solve problems. Like, why would I use one, one way of doing it versus another? Uh, and actually, one of these suggested problems, the uh, array.diff, we can talk about complexity and um, how nested loops can get you in trouble. So we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah. My goal is to be a full stack web developer. Great. Hello. <laughs> I don't think it'll detect that. <laughs> I'm a beginner in backend. I've just made authentication. What else should I try which will make me grow as a full stack developer? That's a great question. I don't know. Does anybody in the chat have suggestions? <laughs> and um, hello, Ringo. And hello, Mohit. And one more. Thoughts on Firebase? It's cool. Um, you, It is a paid service, and it's owned by Google, but it's really easy to get up and going, and it is real time, so yeah. What are the minimum requirements to be a good programmer? You just have to care about what you do. <laughs> That's about it. Um, the thing is, if you care and you try your hardest, that, that'll take you a very, very long way. All right, there's my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch of my invisible drink that it's really hard to open. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> got it. Invisible drink. Oh, invisible.
invisible drink. I'll say this, the thing about, um, that probably makes me a good programmer is my, how persistent I am. So like, even if, if I can't figure something out, I just, I don't give up. I just keep trying and trying and trying and eventually I figure it out. Um, and to anyone f from the outside looking in, it may look like, oh, you just know what you're doing. No, I have failed a ton and I've tried a lot. And that's what makes me a, a good programmer is just persistence. That's one aspect. There's a lot. Oh, nice. Flu is learning React. Uh, Firebase does have a free tier, but eventually you do have to pay. Hello, GG. It is technically Wednesday for me. I don't know where you are in the world, but it is Wednesday morning for me. <laughs> Drink water and not sugar. Uh, let's see. This has 35 grams of sugar. That's okay, I guess. <laughs> Those are always hard to open, yeah. Uh, clear lines exist in theory. In practice, everyone is just trying to figure it all out. Exactly. There is no f f direct path. People will try to sell you that. Be like, take this one course. This is all you need to be a web developer. No. It, it's it's hard. It, everything's different. Um, it just takes time and effort. That's really all it is. <laughs> what are the responsibilities of a back-end and front-end uh, does the back end have to format the data and deliver everything correctly, or is this a function of the front end? Um, it, it depends. I would say if you're new to the whole concept of full stack, um, I did a live stream on uh, Coding Train's channel where I built what I called a full stack Twitter clone. Now, it isn't, uh, this stream is only an hour and a half. It's not like a full, full fledged Twitter clone, but it does give you an idea of what happens on the back end versus what happens on the front end. Um, so check out that video. Um, in that, I'm, I am using vanilla JavaScript on the front end, front end and MongoDB and Node.js on the back end. But I talk about um, a lot of the different back end technologies are interchangeable. At the end of the day, it's really just how it serves that data to the front end. So yeah. Hello, Enfi. It's Wednesday, 4.30. Uh, Rafal? That is a weird L character. I've never seen that before. <laughs> and This is Terrazoid, isn't it? I, is it? Or I don't know. That picture looks uh, interesting. But hello from Poland. Thank you, Prakash. I appreciate that. I didn't realize I was streaming even though I got multiple notifications. That's funny. Like, you just see them on your phone? Ah, what's happening? I don't know. Hello, Martin. And hello, Shohan. Oh, it is Wednesday in, in most, most of the world, I think. Hey, Portal Gaming. <laughs> well, thank you. It's flu. Uh, my opinions about working in a fang company. Um, I, I wouldn't, personally. And because of that very reason. Um, they have an outdated interview process. They're actually like really large corporations that are just gobbling up lots of small companies and I don't like that, so. But all right, I think I'm going to face my fears and we're going to attempt this 7Q deodorant evaporator. Um, the thing is, I read it once before and I didn't really know what it was asking for, but we're, we're gonna try to do it, so let's, let's read it. Uh, this program tests the life of an evaporator containing a gas. Um, we know the content of the evaporator, the percentage of foam or gas lost every day, and the threshold in percentage beyond which evaporator is no longer useful. So I have a feeling we have to come up with some sort of mathematical operation. It's potentially gonna happen multiple times because we're looking at it every day. I don't know, but we'll see. All numbers are strictly positive. Uh, the program reports the nth day as an integer on which the evaporator will be out of use. Note, content is in fact not necessary in the body of the function. You can use it or you cannot use it as you wish. Okay, so. Let's get into this. <laughs> I'm gonna click train. And you can see that they give us this function that takes in a few arguments, but we have to actually fill out the contents of the function. Um, and then we have a test where if we pass in 10, 10, and 10, we get back the value 22. Um, okay, this is unfortunate that this is the only test case we're given. Usually there's a few more test cases, so it can be easier to try and figure out what we need to do, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to bring this code down locally. So technically, you can write your code right here on Code Wars and click Submit, and it'll run it for you. Um, but I like to run it locally because we'll solve it in multiple different ways, and we'll run it over and over again, and it'll be a lot faster. Um, so Alka has a code pin. Here it is, the Code Wars API, um, where we can pass in a Code Wars ID, and it will give us back the slug, like this. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, we'll bring this down locally. Episode 44. Okay, new file. Deodorant evaporator.js. <laughs> 
<laughs> Code Katas is just single player cast of Clash of Code. It changed my mind. No, I, I agree. Uh, it would be really cool if we could take some of these uh, problems that are on uh, Code Wars and do them as Clash of Code problems. I mean, maybe uh, there's some sort of Code Wars API where we could make that happen. Um, I don't know. Maybe, huh? Oh, okay. This is this is an idea. Somebody write this down on Discord so I don't forget. Hey, it's Chiefman. <laughs> but what if the Code Wars API allows you to get the completed uh, katas for a user? And it, if it gives you back the completion time, then we could build a website where multiple people say they're going to start coding a specific kata at the same time. We use the, we use the Code Wars API to determine if they've completed it and at what time they completed it. F okay, finally, a fun idea. <laughs> We're not going to do that today, but that sounds that sounds cool. We could basically turn Code Wars into coding game. All right, think about it and look into the API. Let me know if it's possible. Um, okay, so we have this function. We brought that, and we also brought our test case. Um, so I'm going to use a tool called uh, Quaka. Uh, Q-U-O-K-K-A. Uh, somebody throw the link in the channel. Um, people always ask about it. But it's really cool because it actually runs your code inside of uh, VS Code. And right now, test.assert equals is not defined. This is just Node.js. This doesn't exist. So I'm just going to turn this into a console log. Um, and we can see that right now, when I invoke, invoke my function, I get back negative 1, and I'm expected to get back 22. Quaka, yeah, for those of you needing to spell it. Yeah. Um, so uh, let me acknowledge the follows, and then we'll get into this. Do, 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 do. do I have an all-in-one online style sheet? Sort of? <laughs> small, uh, my opinion on small companies called software houses. Well, in the, uh, in the United States, we call them software consultancies, and I work at one. I, I like them. That's, that's my opinion. <laughs> I've, I've seen Brooks Builds play streams before. I've never played it myself. Yeah, all the katas that I've done are on my computer. and th They're in that Git repo, but yeah. What language do I recommend a beginner to start with? Now, the thing is, you're going to get a lot of, no matter who you ask, you're going to get a lot of different recommendations. But I say JavaScript, mainly because I really, like, I, I write a lot of JavaScript. But you are, you are watching this video most likely in a web browser. You might be on mobile. But if you're watching in a web browser, you can pull up this thing called the developer console, and you can immediately start writing JavaScript. Um, so those of you, actually, let's do this. Um, if this is your first time here and you don't know how to code, Type one in the chat. Let's see if anybody actually does it. Because <laughs> I'm going to be talking directly to you. Thanks for the follow, uh, Senior Dan. Um, <laughs> me seeing a single test immediately hard code the problem. So um, the thing is, they have hidden tests when you do your final submission. So you can't just hard code it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Quaka, thank you. Oh, hello, Alfonso. Welcome, welcome. And uh, Depoprem. Groovy. And thanks for the follow, uh, Nafalona. There we go. One, 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 <laughs> two. <laughs> You're not new, Portal Gamer, are you? Maybe you are. And thanks for the, um, the follow, uh, Nelkyra. Uh, Kappa. Kappa. Off by one. Okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> two. Um, and actually, did you see that animation? I fixed my overlay so that it shows the time the message came in. So sometimes YouTube chats are delayed and they'll, like, shift into spot regardless. But yeah, so... If you don't know how to program, you're using a web browser right now. You can go to any web page, right click it, choose inspect. That's going to bring up the, um, the dev tools. You can click on console and you can immediately start writing JavaScript. You don't have to install an editor. You don't have to download anything. You just do this. And uh, if you want to write your first program, do this with me. Uh, type console.log and pass in. Um, so do uh, console period log open parentheses, single quote, hello space world, single quote, close parentheses, hit enter, and you get back the string, hello world. Welcome to JavaScript. You are a JavaScript developer. Um, this is why I like JavaScript. It's really easy to get started. It's used all over the place. And it's it's once you've learned it, you can start to build uh, shareable, usable websites immediately. You can build things that other people can use. Um, now, if you try to learn something like Java or C++ or Python, Typically, you have to package it up in some way to get somebody else to run your code or use your program. Um, so it's a, it's, there's a lot more steps involved. Um, it's still totally valid. Those can be your first programming languages. But that's why I like JavaScript. It's so easy to just get started. Python is easier. Is it, though? You have to download a Python interpreter. You could technically use an online REPL, but then that's not like a real experience of how you'd be writing the code. I don't know. <laughs> 
Uh, we're about to solve this deodorant evaporator. Thank you, Envy. Much appreciated. Uh, Chrome used to have multi-line editor in the console. I don't know if it still does. <laughs> if you ever do a wall true sleep, it crashes your PC? No way. Chrome is really good about isolating uh, the tab in each, the process in each tab. Bob says, a long time ago, I got Visual Basic for Dummies from my local library. That was my intro to coding. That's cool. Yeah. But like I said, whatever, whatever you want to do, just, just do it. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to be JavaScript. It could be anything else. Uh, but just, just do it. Go do it right now. Okay, so I'd have to capture, calculate the absolute time manually. Okay, that's fine. Why are you undefined? <laughs> so uh, the, the weird thing about the console is it, it, it also logs the result of the expression and the result of this invocation actually is undefined. So that's why we see hello world and then undefined. But as a beginner, don't worry, worry about that. And hello, Alice. <laughs> Chrome has snippets, it does. Um, and because of semicolon, yeah. <laughs> I started with C++ about three times, yeah. Uh, Python comes as a default in Unix terminals. I guess that's true, too. But still, your average person wouldn't necessarily have Linux installed and have Python. I don't know. But this is not a discussion of that. We need to try and solve this problem. So back to it. I've got my function. I've got my invocation. Let's figure out what this thing is asking me. So we know the content of the evaporator. So that's our first argument to the function. We know the percentage of foam. Um, or gas lost every day. So that's, I guess, evaporation per day. That's our second argument to the function. Um, and we know the threshold and percentage beyond which the evaporator is no longer useful. So that's our third argument to the function. So we have this function. It's taking in those three values. And um, the program reports the nth day on which the evaporator will be out of use. OK, this is starting to make sense. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write out some comments to what I think needs to happen here. So um, so content, that's the total. That's, that's everything that's in here. Everything we have. Um, and then evaporation per day is, I believe, a percentage. Let's see. Yeah, it's a, it's a percentage um, that we lose every day. So um, evap per day. Uh, percentage lost every day. So if we think about this in non-programmer terms, like let's say we have a, a cup of water oh, or bottle <laughs> and it has water in it. And every day, if it's like sitting out in the sun, it loses 1% of its volume because it, it evaporates. That's actually what we have to calculate here. It doesn't actually seem that complicated. So we start off with a given volume. Every single day, we lose a certain uh, amount of the total amount. And then if we ever get to the threshold, meaning the, the minimum amount that we can have to be useful, then we're done. So let's let's code this thing up. Look at that bottle. Yeah, it's, it's invisible. <laughs> so take away 10% until the total content is less than 10% of the starting total. For this example, yes. So in this example, they're passing in, let's say the starting volume is uh, 10 liters. And every day we lose 10% of that volume um, on... Um, what day is, um, are we at 10% of the initial value? That's okay. We got to figure out what threshold means. Uh, okay. Threshold is in percentage as well. So this is, this is the percentage of the initial value when it's no longer useful. So we need to calculate that as well. And doc has it as, as a one liner, but we're going to try to figure it out. Uh, and thanks for the follow Finn, Finn Rael. I think it's 10% of the max content. That's, that's what I'm going to calculate it as, but we'll see. So here's what we need to do. Uh, we need to store, um, so we need a place to store the, uh, makes sense. <laughs> we need a place to store, uh, like the, the final value, um, in term, the, the final threshold value in terms of content, not in terms of percentage. So a place to store the minimum, um, threshold value. as a measurement, not percent. Because uh, when they pass in threshold, this is actually a percent, like 10. Um, so we need to do that. Let's take a quick stretch.
Here we go. Um, so initially, we're going to calculate the the maximum threshold. So if the the initial content is 10 and the maximum threshold is 10%, then this value is going to be 10% of 10, which is 1. And we'll, we'll calculate that initially. OK, uh, next up, we need to uh, remove the amount va evaporated every day. And we also need to count the total number of days. So a place to store the total number of days. And this is going to be initialized to 0. So we start off with nothing. Well, we're on the zeroth day. Um, and then we need a loop, right? We need to, to simulate each day happening. And so we're going to um, uh, loop until the current total is less than or equal to the uh, stored minimum threshold value. So this value that we calculate here, let's do that. This value. We want to iterate until we find that the amount left is actually equal to that. OK, so we're going to loop. And then here we will uh, update the current total. Well, let's say um, subtract the percentage evaporated, evap evaporated <laughs> uh, from the current total. So we're going to uh, subtract the percentage. That gives us a new total that we're going to use the next time around. And then we also uh, increment total number of days. <laughs> and uh, Toter on the board with a 99.96. I would say in all time Coding Garden drop game, you're probably top five. So congrats. <laughs> um, and I think, I think this has it. This is what we need to do. This is the, the code we need to write. And then we will return uh, the total number of days. I think this is what we got to do. Isn't it easier to say that content equals 100% at the beginning instead of converting the threshold? I think where this gets tricky is that on each day, it's not 10% of the initial content. It's 10% of the current content, which is why it actually takes 22 days. Because if, if this were linear, if it was like 10% uh, of the original content, then that would just be nine days. Because if we lose 10% of the original total one day at a time, that's nine days until we get to one, um, but it's 22. So I, I think I think we've got it, but we'll see. Let's see if this works. Um, yeah, those are these are just descriptions. So first up, don't do math. It involves logarithms. Just do a while loop. <laughs> so a place to store the minimum threshold value, um, and we're, I'm just going to call it uh, minimum threshold value. Don't do math. <laughs> well, the thing is, yeah. So what I uh, technically, I think you could do uh, like a you could do a logarithm to solve it like on one line. I think that's what uh, Bayan is saying. But what I'm going to do is to calculate it with a loop. Is the relationship linear or exponential? I don't know. I think it's logarithmic. I don't really know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. So we have the minimum threshold value, and this is equal to content. Um, and then we need to get a certain percentage of it. So I can say uh, threshold divided by 100, that's going to give us uh, the threshold percentage. And actually, let's store the threshold percentage in a variable because we're going to be using it over and over again. Um, threshold percentage. It's not linear. OK. So I'm going to put the threshold percentage right there. And you'll see that uh, they pass in 10, but we actually need 10%. So I'm dividing it by 100, which is going to give us 0.1. Um, so that's our threshold percentage. And then we can say content uh, times the threshold percentage. And that gives us our minimum threshold value. And if we just log that, our minimum uh, minimum threshold. Why isn't it helping me? Come on. <laughs> if, we, if we log that, we get 1. So we want to calculate until the volume equals 1. Um, OK. Uh, threshold is already a percentage. Well, I mean, technically it's stored as 10, but to be useful in my mathematic operations, I want it to be a decimal 0.1. So that's why I'm doing this. So I could call this threshold decimal or threshold decimal, uh, but basically that's what we're doing. We're taking a whole number and turning it into a decimal so that it's easy to use later on. Um, all right, now we need the total number of days initialized to zero. Uh, and for this, I'm going to use let because we're going to be. Um, 
we're going to be um, calculating it or changing it. Sorry. <laughs> so total days starts at zero and we're going to have a loop that changes the total number of days. Offline rocker says that's a big O of log. I, I, I feel like I kind of knew I did. Let's not. I didn't know that, <laughs> but it seemed it seemed that way because uh, there was a comment earlier that was, why do we need to hold on to the why do we need to calculate this first? Uh, and the reason is because the value changes every time. Like if, if the va if the minimum threshold was the minimum threshold of the original, then um, or that's what I don't know. Is Infi getting on the board with a drop bot? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> but let's do this. So now we have the total days and now we need a loop. Um, so we're going to say while the current total, and I'm just going to call that content, uh, is less than or equal to the minimum threshold value. So while that's the case, we're just going to loop. And right now, I believe we will have an infinite loop. Oh, well, it's sorry. Well, it's uh, greater than or equal to. <laughs> greater than or equal to. Um, subtract, yeah, and you'll notice Quaka just quit. I technically have an infinite loop right now. <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, stuff in here because um, this loop never, never exits. So while the content is greater than or equal to the minimum threshold, subtract the percentage evaporated from the current total. So I'm going to say content minus equals content times the um, evaporation per day. And actually, we didn't need the threshold percentage. Um, we needed the evaporation per day percentage, because that, that's the other thing. This 10 is also in a percent, so I'm going to put that in a variable. So I'm going to say evaporation, evaporation percentage. And that's going to be equal to uh, evap per day divided by 100 as well. OK. But the reason I'm doing that is because uh, that's what we're going to be using over and over again. So content times evaporation percentage, that's how much is lost on that given day. Uh, and then content um, gets reduced. And then we increment the total number of days. So I'll say total days plus plus. Now, did I do it correctly? Do we want to take bets on if I got it right on my first try or if I'm going to have to update some things? <laughs> what do you all think? Uh, and thanks for the follow, Charmins. Welcome, welcome. Um, let's see, let's see. I think, uh, I think someone tied with you, Bob. There are two people that have gotten a perfect 100 on the leaderboard. Did you get a perfect 100, Bob? You might have got a 99.99. But I think there are two people that have gotten 100. Or maybe there's one that's gotten 100. Is it easier to say that content equals 100% at the beginning instead of converting the threshold? Possibly? Possibly. <laughs> and hello, Lakshan. Welcome. Math is hard. Um, yeah, I only needed that once. I, I was thinking of the evaporation percentage. So technically, we didn't have to put threshold percentage in a variable. Technically, we didn't have to put evaporation percentage in a variable. We could have just put this equation in line here. But I do like to have things that are reusable. So uh, threshold divided by 100 is greater than or equal to content minus 1 evaporations per day <laughs> raised to the x. So I think this is the, um, let's hold on to this. This could be like a, a one-liner solution to this problem. But it, it uses maths. We'll come back to that. As the problem size increases, the computer takes lesser and lesser time. Not lesser and lesser time, but the, the, as the size of the input grows, the runtime plateaus because it's log of n. It's not, definitely not lesser. Uh, inside the loop, you have to update the content, increase the counter by one. Yep, so that's what we're doing. So we have the total content. Like, remember, we have our bottle of invisible water, and each day we lose a certain percentage. So we're updating that content value to be the total amount that's left after we subtract how much evaporated on that day, and then we increment the number of days. <laughs> uh, I'm going to work on the 3Pass compiler tonight. So at 6.30 PM, uh, GMT minus 6, that's when I'm going to do it. Hello, Potato Head. Aries says, it's correct. Looks right to me. Uh, I still need to return lo total days. Yeah. <laughs> okay, no worries. Magic bottle. Okay, so here's what we do. We return total days. Did we get it right? We got it right! 22! 
<laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, our function returns 22. Very cool. Um, let's think of other ways that we can solve this. I think technically, I believe, I was trying to think, like, could we do use a reduce or something like that? But uh, let's maybe try to implement, in, in, uh, implement what, uh, I forget your name, I'm sorry. Who was it? Oh, we also have what Doc recommended too. I think that's a similar thing. Okay. Was it Bayon? Yeah, uh, Bayon. Uh, Bayon, sorry. Yeah, Bayon Pro. Can we convert this into an equation? Uh, the database I will work on tomorrow. What's up, Brandon? There's a bug in mine. And thanks for the follow, Pogger. <laughs> um, so uh, we solved it. That's great. And we broke it down. And you know what? I am actually very proud of this because. You, may, you can go look look back at previous Code Katas episodes. Every time I saw this problem recommended at the top, I just skipped it because <laughs> because I, I didn't like I read this once and I was like, what are they even talking about? But it's totally doable. We figured it out. Great work, everyone. Now, can we do it uh, with just a simple equation instead of calculating the loop? Let's try. Um, so I'm going to redefine this function. And right now it returns undefined because I redefined the function. And let's try. Cow, 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 cow. Thank you so much for the follow. Can we get some cow drops? Some cow drops to uh, commemorate the following of us by cow, 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 cow. Um, all right. I need to find X. Actually, let's, <laughs> let me write this out. We can do a little bit of math. And I think that's, uh, that's the, the use case for uh, logarithm. Makes sense says it seems like O of N to me. I don't think it is. I think it's, it's O of uh, log of N because um, it's not it's not linear, and we're updating the value every time. Yeah, I have 41,000 subs on YouTube. That's pretty cool, huh? Did we get some cow drops? Let me show you all what I mean by, by cow drops. There we go. Alka dropped a cow. Open up your emoji menu. Type in cow. Hit enter. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Look at all these cow drops. Yeah, so it, it would be linear if the the for loop, oh, not the for loop, if the loop always had the same number of iterations based on the input, but that changes because we're decreasing by a percentage. Those are not cows. Some of those are dogs and horses or unicorns. What are you all doing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so to solve that equation, you need to find a variable, which is an exponent, uh, so it involves logarithms. It's easy, but hard. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try. Um, no, we don't want that. What do we want? I actually don't have, um, I don't have the LED or the, uh, connect four game going, but that's okay. Whoa. There we go. All right, so we have a piece of paper. We're going to write on that piece of paper. <laughs> so uh, we need the equation that um, Bayon provided. I guess it's, isn't, don't you just do the logarithm thing to find x? But we have uh, the content threshold, let's call it cs, divided by 100. Um, and that is greater than or equal to the, um, what's, uh, I have a, a, an arm that the, the webcam is mounted to. Uh, what is this content invocation? Content of one minus evaporations. So what is content? I am older than 12 and younger than 40. It sounds like a riddle. It's not. I just don't want to tell you my age. Um, what do you mean by this, Bayon? Content, one minus evaporation per day divided by x. It's mounted on magic. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, a multiplication. Okay. I see. I thought it looked like a function invocation. So let's call content C, and we are multiplying that times one 
Here's my break timer. Honestly, we should take a quick break because I've been talking for 49 minutes. And while we're breaking, a uh, shout out to all my patrons and YouTube members. Um, Coding Garden is brought to you by all of those wonderful people. Um, so here are their names. It'll be up in a second. <laughs> Let's take our five minute break. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks to all these wonderful people uh, who support me on Patreon and YouTube. There are a lot of different support levels and uh, I appreciate it very, very much. Hello, Bears. Welcome. <laughs> We're stretching. If you're sitting at home, go ahead and go ahead and stand up. You don't have to, but it'll help. You'll probably feel better. <laughs> uh, this is called a timeout. If you do exclamation mark break, you'll get a link to it. And hello, Zaid. Welcome. And thanks for the follow, Dooming, Doomin, Doom, Dominating. <laughs> oh yeah, so in in my overlay, um, it 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 reads Markdown. So if you wrap your code in backticks or expressions in backticks, it'll just render out what you have there. Hello, Bears. Uh, we are writing some code. Uh, right now we're taking a, a break, <laughs> but before that we were writing some code. Um, we're solving Code Wars code katas. If you go to CodeWars.com, you can see all the different kinds of um, problems that you can solve. Um, and I am sure, Infi, come on. <laughs> and we just solved one called deodorant evaporator. Uh, and what we're about to try and do is see if we can come up with an equation to solve it all in one go. Oh, let me turn the patrons off. And again, shout out and thanks to all my patrons and members. Um, <laughs> it works. Yeah, it's just a code block. That works. That's fine. Hey, Landon, welcome. Um, okay, so uh, basically we wrote this and it's a loop. But apparently there's a mathematical equation that can calculate the same thing. So we're going to try and figure that out based on the suggestion by Bayon. Um, okay. So here we are. We're, we're writing some, some things out here. So we have uh, content times 1 minus uh, evaporations per day. So we'll say like EVP uh, divided by 100. And I guess... Um, I guess what you're saying, Bayun, is is this entire expression raised to the power of x? Oh, I see. And so um, this is threshold times. So this is uh, content. Oh, thank you, Portal Gaming. <laughs> so content c times the threshold t divided by 100. That's what this is saying on the left hand side. Okay, yeah, okay, so we have content times threshold divided by 100, which is less than or equal to? Um, you have greater than or equal to in the previous one, but that's okay. Content times, okay, and then this part here is raised to the exponent. So 1 minus evaporations per day raised to the power of x. There, let's solve for x. <laughs> this is the math problem. <laughs> Can we solve for x? And actually, let me just rewrite this uh, in a more readable way. I'm going to try it again. So c, which is content, times t, which is threshold, divided by 100. And uh, OK, so the it's greater than or equal to. All right. <laughs> which is greater than or equal to c times 1 minus the evaporation uh, per day, so we'll call it evap or EV, divided by 100 raised to the power of x. Um, and we need to solve for x. <laughs> so um, what we can do first, and I think Doc mentioned it, is subtract c from both sides. Where'd that message go? I need a way to filter this. I need a way to filter all these messages. I've talked about this before. The contents cancel out. Yeah, so I think, uh, oh, thank you. I tried my best. <laughs> so if when we're trying to solve this equation, and you all can help me because it's been a long time since I've done algebra, but I think if we subtract c from both sides, we then end up with t over 100 is greater than or equal to 1 minus the evaporation divided by 100 raised to the power of x. So we've essentially canceled out c. Um, and then this, this, this thing here, um, with raised to the power of x, that involves a logarithm, right? Can somebody help me out with, um, like, what exactly does that mean in terms of logarithms? Take the log of both sides, says Barris. Um, log of x of both sides. Because if you take the log of x of this, 
Like what what is that what does that equate to? Um what can I what can I help me with this? What can I look up to see that kind of equation or like take the log of both sides like what does that give me um a logarithm is like equal to something raised to an exponent inverse functions logarithm rules um okay so log b of x is equal to y is the same thing as b to the y equal to x so th this is the equation that i was looking for i think right photo math <laughs> And so Bayon has the, the simplification, but I think this is basically what, what they've used is um, if you ever see, and this is actually what we see uh, right now, something raised to the y is equal to x. So we um, over here, we see this thing raised to some value is equal to some other value. So we can write that in terms of log. So we can actually write um, log base b, which is this, so log base 1 minus ev divided by 100 um, times, oh, wait, 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 no, b raised to the y. So this is b. We're saying this is b, and this, this x we have here is y. <laughs> so yeah, log to the b, and then um, times x, so t over 100 is our x. is greater than or equal to um, y, which is x, like so. I think I think this is what it simplifies to. We can check um, uh, of what Bayon says. So Bayon says log of t over 100 times x, uh, or is greater than or equal to x times log of 1 minus... OK, so is this the simplification of what I wrote? Yeah, so I so it, to to simplify this, I think I need to put them both in in terms of this this logarithm. Let me know if I'm totally off base, but but let me know, uh, Bayon. And thanks for the follow, Berries and Yakis. Base to the power equals the result. Power equals log base result. Yeah, so I think that's what we did here. So base to the power equals the result, and then we get um, power, which is x equals log of the base times the result. OK, Argo Monkey has a one-liner. And thanks for the follow, uh, Dermatry. Everybody has logarithms, <laughs> but uh, logarithm identities. So um, did please let me know, though, did I do this equation correctly? Like. Does this technically make sense, but we can also write it in this way, which is technically the same thing. Log of a to the x is equal to x times log of a. Okay, so uh, we have log of base b, which is equal to x times log of a. So um, 1 minus evap ev over 100. Uh, we could write that in terms of an exponent, right? We could say um, would that be 1 minus um, how could I turn this into an exponent? It would be raised to the negative 1 power, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, I see. So it's, uh, is it I don't know. I'm not good at math. <laughs> Uh, and then log of b of e equals log of e divided by log of b. Lo log both sides of the inequality. Anti-log both sides? More complex math stuff. Um, I don't think I got a confirmation, though. Did I write this correctly? <laughs> like this is written, but it's just not in the right format that's easily, um, what's the word, um, simplifiable? <laughs> but is this technically correct, what I wrote here? Or is this, am I way off base? Math log of x means log base e of x. Close. Oh, what I divide, oh, you're right. Yeah, divide by, wait, what I divide by c? 
It isn't written correct. Okay, so I'm totally off. But um, you're right, because it, it, this isn't addition or subtraction. I, it, because it's being multiplied here, I would have needed to divide, which gives us a different equation. Okay, we're totally off. we got to start over. <laughs> Let's rewrite it. Um, In computer science, the base is always two. <laughs> uh, see you later, MP. Thanks for hanging out with us. And thanks for the follow, uh, Dink Bink. And thanks for the follow, Louise Hacks. It's still correct because it turns to one. Does it, though? Oh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to rewrite it then. Because if we, if we divide by this, because this whole thing is time C, and if we divide by C, it just cancels out. So I can change this minus sign into a into a division sign, and then those just cancel out like that. It's technically the same thing. <laughs> uh, all right, I think it's too early in the morning for me to figure this out. Um, but I did copy and paste uh, something that someone sent in the chat. Um, let's see what I copy and pasted. This. And who was that? Raise your hand if you sent me this message, because I totally lost whoever it was. Ag Agro monkey, there it was. If you really want a one-liner, here you go. You don't actually need to know content because you start out at 100% and you just use percentages. Return that. Okay, thank you, Argo monkey. Everybody's giving me these logs, but I really don't know what to do with them. Log of m divided by n is equal to log of m minus log of n. I have the right answer, just the wrong working. Well, so that's what that's a that's I guess that's what I mean. Um. Okay, so when I, when I was converting these to log, I have the wrong thing. So this, this is incorrect. Is that what we're saying? This part right here? Hello, Louise Hacks. We're trying to figure out logarithms. I'm, I'm not, it's been a long time since I did math is the thing. Yeah, I could, I, I could divide C. So that's what I did before. Agro monkey. Thank you, agro monkey. Just to apply the final base transformation, log law, to write it out in terms of math of log. And you got, OK. Thank you, Doc. Let's figure that out. Um, we're going to get rid of that extra stuff that I wrote. So we have this, and now we have to write it in terms of log law. Um, how can I find log law? Uh, you might have been sending it to me in the chat, but console.log is so much easier than this. <laughs> That's like a programmer joke, right? Because <laughs> it's not a math log, it's a console log. Um, <laughs> I will keep with my while loop. Yeah, it's totally fine to solve this with a while loop. I just felt like doing some math this morning. I don't know why. Yeah, thank you, Alka. Alka's got it. <laughs> okay, the only log rule I need, let's, uh, AgroMonkey has it. So uh, y equals <clears throat> x raised to the n, and n is equal to log of y divided by log of x. OK, so this, I used a different log rule here. So this is, this is what um, AgroMonkey has said. So y equals x raised to the n is equal to n is equal to log of x divided by log of y. Um, and if we do that, it's actually really e e easy to simplify this portion to use that log. So let's do that. I need more paper. <laughs> Um, so given our simplified equation and our, we know that, actually, let's just do this. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so we have that. We want to use this equation to turn it into that. So we can say, um, oh, no, no, so I missed, I missed the other thing. Y equals X to the N. Y equals X to the N. So in our case, in is x, so I can say x. Uh, this is y. So this is uh, log of t over 100 divided by log of 1 minus ev over 100. So this is y equals x to the n, y, x, n. So this is our n, this is our y, and this is our x. So this is our simplified equation. 
which I believe we can simplify further. Did I do that right? Is this where we're at? And good morning, Brooks. Welcome. Is there a way to see the full drop leaderboard? There's not, but if you remind me at the end of the stream, I can just make it show as many that will fit on the screen. Thank you, Joshua. Any log. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So now that we have this. Oh, I changed sides. Right, 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 right. So uh, that's a good point. <laughs> so because I have this greater than or equal to that, I put in on this side, we need to flop, flop the greater than or equal to. This actually needs to be uh, less than or equal because it's now on the opposite side. The disequation is reversed. Now solve it using calculus. I don't think this is calculus related. <laughs> um, Okay, and so we and what I think uh, what uh, Laksh Lakshman is, is mentioning is uh, this equation here can be written out as log of t minus log of one hundred, and this can be written out as um, log of what just happened? <laughs> it's like my I thought my power went out. But my air conditioner stopped like right when the screen went out. There we go. We're back. <laughs> um, I like what Lakshman wrote because um, that's simplifying this here in terms of log. And then we can solve it with uh, that. Yeah. More simplified. Not again. <laughs> no, we're back. We're back. <laughs> Too much math overload. But we're about to be done. You cannot change the denominator. <laughs> that legit was the weirdest thing. <laughs> Capture card, trying to do log math, yeah. Um, okay, log of, oh wait, so uh, are you saying, Bayon, that uh, what Lakshman wrote is not correct? Be well, does this become, how would we sim, 100, I don't know. Where do I go from here? <laughs> we need a cat to make C uh, um, CJ stop streaming. Lakshman was correct, okay. It's true for the numerator. Only the numerator can change. I don't need to simplify it anymore? Um, but I have all these nested uh, unknowns like oh no I do know what T and E oh we know what T is we know what EV is okay so we just solve it <laughs> okay 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 uh, it's just, uh, yeah I totally thought that we were trying to solve for T and E as well but yeah we, we know what those values are so uh, now it's literally just I mean I don't know I'm gonna rewrite it just so it's cleaner but then we have a log of T divided by 100 um, over log of 1 minus EV over 100. We'll get rid of that nasty mistake before, from before. And there we go. This is a halting problem. <laughs> uh. Okay. Um, and thanks for the follow, uh, uh, Akash. And a high school math teacher might, might want me to solve, but that's slower on a computer. Okay, I, I don't. Uh, let's let's go. Uh, we we have, I think, what we need. Now let's write some code. So um, we can say uh, math.log. That takes in um, our threshold divided by 100 uh, divided by math.log of 1 minus the um, evaporation per day divided by 100. Cool. <laughs> 21.85. So it takes 21.85 days, but technically we round up and say it takes 22 days. Look at us out here doing maths. And really it's the chat. Thank you very much, uh, Bayan, for helping us figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and so then we just math.sealing it. Um, and that gives us a whole number. Would you look at that? 
Uh, Agro Monkey says, the only difference in my answer is that I used a slightly different denominator. So this was the original message that they sent. Uh, math.log of threshold divided by 100 divided by math.log of 100 minus evaps per day divided by 100. Yeah, so um, this, this equation was simplified in, in our version. <laughs> Change uh, log uh, of over 100 to log of th minus 2. Right here? Please, I beg you. <laughs> let's let's write it both ways. But I think I I, I think I see what you're asking. Um, so we have that. Instead, we want, and I guess this is its own equation. We have um, math dot log of threshold minus two. Is that what you meant? Goose. Hello, Goose. Hello, Brandon. Welcome. Uh, minus two is only true for base 10. Oh, so I think we can pass the base in, though. Because I think the it does the natural one instead. That didn't work. Let's look up math.log on MDN. Yeah, so it does it using the natural base E in JavaScript. Um, however, I think we can, can we change the base to be uh, base, base 10? <laughs> None of my messages are being displayed. Well, th that one was, welcome track. Good afternoon, Jolly. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna stop talking about this, but uh, let me know, <laughs> let me know Bayon. Um, what do you mean by that? Yeah, it doesn't do a default log. So that, that won't technically work because we're log base E. All right, but we did it. We did math. I'm excited about that. <laughs> but here's what I'm going to do. Parse int base 8. Um, I'm going to submit this solution to Code Wars. Uh, I'm going to rewrite it without all the comments so we can see what, what a, like, a more pared down solution looks like. Um, and I will say, if you are new to programming, you can just ignore the last 30 minutes of what we've been doing. None of that is relevant to, uh, or not, I mean, it's, it's, it is relevant, but none of that is required to be able to solve this problem. Um, you can break it down in terms of iteration, and we were able to, able to solve that problem that way. So I was able to solve the problem without knowing anything about uh, logarithms. I mean, I know a little bit, but I really, I had to look everything up. People in the chat were helping me. I think that's the lesson we've learned here. Uh, if you know maths, you can solve it pretty easily, but you don't have to know maths to be able to solve this problem. What do you all think of that? <laughs> that's that's my uh, conclusion about what we just did here. Okay, Bayon gave us the explanation. And thanks for the follow-up light panel. Pretty sure I haven't had to bust out math log in my last year of work. Yeah, there we go. Argo Monkey, uh, Agro Monkey has it. They were helping us, and they were like, in the past year, I haven't even had to use math log. So, cool. Um, but... Uh, to do this without math.log, uh, we just do success, successive, uh, successive subtractions to calculate the total amount we lost on each day. Any approach that deepens my knowledge is cool with me. Cool. All right, so I'm going to submit this one on Code Wars, and let's see if we got it right for all the different um, possibilities. Alert, one, two, three. Thank you, TJ. <laughs> Uh, so it works for the test case, but on Code Wars, when you click Attempt, it's going to throw a, a bunch of different test cases at it to see if you've done it right. There we go. So a um, bunch of different test cases, and we're ready to go. <laughs> Bayon says, I used, one, used it one hour ago in my bachelor's final thesis. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, Akash, uh, follow is, is similar to subscribe. So on Twitch, if you click follow, that just means you'll uh, get a notification whenever I go live. That's pretty much what it means. Uh, all right, we'll do the submission. Okay. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Alka's got it. Um All right. I'm I'm I am excited. We could end the stream there, but we're not gonna. We're gonna we're gonna do one more problem for about 30 minutes. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh we can see the way that other people have done it. Um math.log of threshold divided by math.log of one minus evaporations per day. Cool. Yeah, so you could have divided by 100 beforehand, and then you didn't have to do it inside of the equation. Um, this person did it the way that we did it, 
just uh, a loop with successive um, subtractions. Very similar, but they don't have very good indentation practices. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you're new to programming, you might, I mean, <clears throat> I just do this by default, but uh, I like to make sure that when I'm writing code inside of a function, it's at least <clears throat> indented one tab space, right? The way, the, <clears throat> the way we see those people wrote their code was like this, and your code will still work, but I don't like it. <laughs> X's and O's, which is a 7Q? Uh, I might take a look at that. Um, the thing is, we have uh, two 6Q's on deck that we were going to do. But um, can you can you give me a link, Sid? I'll take a look. Slow mode just means you can only send a, a message every certain number of seconds. Do I know how to do multiple migrations? I have not done .NET in a long time. Let's go with Python. <laughs> Valid parentheses. I might have done it before. So if you check out uh, code katas.now.sh, you can search for all of the ones that I've solved up to episode 35. I need to update this for the more recent episodes. Um, but if you do, if you search for valid braces, you can see that I solved that one in episode 27. Oh, and uh, David is saying, can I check out the weather app that Kobe told me about? Yeah, let's let's take a look. <laughs> Hello, light bam. <laughs> is that like a mix of a... Oh, it kind of looked like SQL injection, but no. It's just a cross-site script attempt. Compiler stuff. Sci-fi weather app dot XYZ. My sound isn't on. <laughs> I'm trying to be helpful, gosh darn it. <laughs> you know, I I was so... <laughs> um, I wanted to help you. I really did. I thought you were having React issues. You did it, yeah. So uh, shout out to our newest mods, Kobe and, uh, and and David, who who jointly Rickrolled me because Kobe uh, sent me a DM beforehand. I was like, hey, you should check this out. And I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look. Mm -mm. Yeah, days since last Rickroll incident, zero. <laughs> uh, the Rickroll Hall of Fame, I don't think I've updated it, and I don't know if there are any um, pull requests, but you can check out the Rickroll Hall of Fame to see all of the other times that I have been... <laughs> Well, that was a good one, because um, the thing is, it's getting harder and harder to rickroll me, and I thought I could trust my new mods, but I guess not. <laughs> I need to redeploy. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at X's and O's. GG. <clears throat> Brooks has never rickrolled me. That's true. <laughs> um, it looks like I might have done this one. Uh, Kokatas. No, it's not. It, I would say it's not a way to get unmodded. Um, mods are essentially verified trolls. Alka once said that, and I think it's words of wisdom. Mods are just verified trolls. Um, <laughs> mutiny on the coding garden ship. But actually, yeah, so I solved that one in episode two. We're going way back. That was probably close to two years ago. Uh, X's and O's. So check that out. Um, here, a link to episode two of Code Wars. Um, this is before I really knew what I was doing. But yeah. My method of trolling is bad puns. <laughs> well, I'm all right with that. <laughs> it took way too much setup, but it was worth it. That's the thing, like... Uh, I you gained my confidence, and uh, and it was in the back of my mind that I should be prepared for it, and then that happened. All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do um, the array diff one that was suggested on um, uh, on GitHub. And uh, David, can you open an issue to suggest this one? Because I can take a look at it next time. Schrodinger's bullying. Because I think this is the last one we're gonna have time to do today. Uh, the no, not that one. Um, array diff. And this will be a fun one where we can talk about uh, Big O and um, how certain types of solutions 
might actually have a longer runtime than other types of solutions. <laughs> Anyone else interested in a nice uh, weather app? It's basically social engineering. I got social engineered by my mods. See you later, Sid. Uh, hopefully that video helps you out. If not, feel free to join the Discord and ask some questions. Um, and thanks for the follow bits of logic. All right, so we're going to pull this down locally. We're going to call it bits uh, array diff, array dot diff dot js. Thanks for the follow, German, and thanks for the follow, Gman. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we'll pull in this function, and we'll pull in our sample tests, just that part there. No, thank you. <laughs> Let's take a quick stretch. If you've been sitting at home for a while, feel free to stand up. Walk around, take a sip of water. Um, I have the ability to unlock affiliate, but I just, um, what do you call it? I just applied for partner because my, my metrics met the stats. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. But the, the main reason I'm not affiliate is because I'm streaming on both YouTube and Twitch right now. And uh, affiliates, uh, have to sign an agreement that has an exclusivity clause um, that prevents them from streaming, well, from simulcasting content from Twitch. Keyboard sound intensifies. <laughs> yeah, that's my plan. Uh, the theme is called Just Black. If you do exclamation mark theme, you'll get a link to the theme. Uh, and if you do um, exclamation mark VS code, you can get a link to all my VS code settings and um, you can see all of my previous themes as well. Exactly, and that's what I was thinking, G-Man. I don't know how it's gonna work out, but I have heard of some streamers that in their partner agreement, they actually are allowed to stream to other platforms because they've, like that's where their, their subscriber base is. So we'll see, yeah, we'll see. Um, okay, so this is the problem that we're trying to solve, array.diff. Your goal is to implement a difference function which subtracts one list from another and returns the result. So it should remo remove all values from list A which are present in list B. So if we're given the array one and two and we're given another array that includes the value one, um, we need to return an array that only includes two because we remove all the values in the second array from the first array. Um, and then similarly, if we have this array with uh, multiple values and multiple twos and we give it an array with two in it, we need to return an array that does not have any twos inside of it. So that's what we're doing here in array diff. We need to take all the values that are in B uh, and remove them from A and return that new array. That's what we got to do. Um, I'm going to start up Quaka JS. Um, that is this thing. It's really cool. It runs your code inside of the editor. Um, and if anybody asks about it, feel free to send them the link. Um, here. It seems like filter would be useful here. Yeah, so uh, I think here's, here's what we're going to do. Um, this is my game plan, and then I do got to gotta, gotta head out. So uh, first, first plan, uh, solve it with a for loop. With, uh, nested, for, with nested for loops. <laughs> uh, second plan, uh, solve it with... Uh, filter and probably includes um, or find. Um, so those are like higher order methods and we can do that. And then my last plan, which is probably the most performant, um, is to uh, solve it with a filter and a pre-computed set. <laughs> those are our plans. Yeah, Quack is great. And hello, OGs. Nice, nice avatar. <laughs> Oh yeah, thank you, thank you, Doc. Much uh, yes. So if you're watching on YouTube, please head over to Twitch, um, so that Twitch can know that people want to watch me. <laughs> um, yeah, Twitch.tv/CodingGarden. And thanks for the follow, OGs. Uh, Josh says when I first started JavaScript, for loops looked so complex. Um, would you look at that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to break them down. Uh, and let's let's actually do that. So uh, here's. Let's write out some pseudocode first. So this, this is um, our, our first attempt. We're going to solve it using nested for loops. So here's what we need to do. We need to, um, we probably need a place to store the result array. And that's initialized to empty. So we start off with an empty array. 
and then we start to iterate over the the first array a. So then we'll we'll say um, iterate over array a, um, and then for every value inside of a, we will iterate over b and see if the current value is in uh, b. If it is break out of this for loop. <laughs> if we iterated over all of B and did not find the current value, uh, push the current value into the result array. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to have a nested loop. We're going to iterate over this array. And for every value, we're going to iterate over the second array to see if that value is inside of there. If we iterate over the whole thing and we don't find it, then uh, we push that value into our result, meaning it wasn't found. If we iterate over that array and we do find it, we, we're, we stop searching and then we go on to the next value. So that's the plan. Array.filter. Um, and yes, that's a link to the MDN docs. I can't trust you all now. <laughs> You're like gonna try to rickroll me with random stuff. Oh, and also I can, I can close this. And thanks for the follow, Ibonzi. Um, OK, so this is our game plan, nested loops. Let's do it. So we need a place to st store the result array. Let's call it result. And that just starts off as an empty array. And then we iterate over A. Um, now, somebody mentioned that for beginner programmers, for loops are, are really hard to grasp. Let's break it down. So with a for loop, you have basically three expressions that you pass into the for loop. Uh, yeah, webcam's gone. <laughs> um, the first expression in the for loop is your initialization. And in this case, we need a variable that will, will hold on to which index in the array we're at. So I'm going to use the variable i for that. Typically, that means index or iterator, because for every index in here, so 0, 1, that value is going to hold on to that index, 0, 1, 2. So the first part of a for loop, that's our initialization. The next part of the for loop is the condition on if that for loop should continue running. And right here, we want to say run while i is less than a.length. So we want this for loop to keep going um, until i is greater than the length, because we're going to increase i every time. And then once it gets greater than the length, we're done iterating. So that's our condition. And then the last thing um, is the variable assignment. So we can say i++. And what this means is on every iteration, we will increment i, do this check. And if this check uh, is true, we'll do the code that's inside of the for loop. So that's a breakdown of a for loop. Um, the cool thing about it is you can do potentially multiple assignments right here. You can have any condition you want. As long as this condition results in a truthy or a falsy value, that can be your part there. And this can be re any reassignment at all um, till it's equal to the length. Yeah, we're actually going to go uh, less than because uh, the length is um, one greater than the, la the last index. Making your own headers in C is hard. <laughs> This is one line of code in Haskell, yeah. All right, so that's our for loop. Um, and then now that we're iterating over the first array, we need another for loop to iterate over the second array. Um, because for each value, we're going to gonna need to check it. And so here's what I'll do. Um, I'll create a variable called current value. And that's equal to the array a at i. So that's going to reach in and grab that specific index. So whether it's the 0th index, it would get like 3. If it's the first index, it would get 4. So um, Oh, you're welcome, uh, Lakshman. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no worries, Joshua. Ho hopefully that helps for anybody that's working on for loops out there. So that's the for loop. And then uh, we can get access to each value inside of that array A. So I'm putting that in a variable called current value. Um, and now we need to iterate over B. Um, so I'm going to do another for loop. But the thing is, I need a new iterator variable. I can't reuse I, because then the for loops would get messed up. So I'm going to use J. Um, this is just a programmer convention, like i, j, k. It comes from mathematics. Um, but ultimately, I just need a new variable. And I'm going to be iterating while it's less than b.length, because I'm iterating over the second array, not, not the first array. <laughs> uh, drop game emotes are broken from YouTube? That's unfortunate. I can look into that later. Hello, Vishnu. Thank you. And hello, uh, Rodonis. I, I think I missed your hello earlier. 
Uh, Aram says, what is let variable? Is it like const, but a change value? Yes. So you'll notice right here that we're changing the value that's stored inside of the i variable. And that's why we use let. Um, if we used const, we could not reassign it. But because we said let, JavaScript lets us put a new value inside of there. And thanks for the follow, P-Sausage. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. And then uh, everyone has it. This is not B++. This is J++. Uh, how can I run scripts on the chat? Um, you can't. <laughs> so I, I disable styles. I disable scripts. The, the main thing is if you could cross-site cross -site script this thing, you could potentially control my computer because it is a an Electron app. But yeah. So yeah, that was an infinite loop. <laughs> uh, this, this question is called array diff. It's an 8Q on Code Wars. Here, I'll, I'll share the link. This is the one we're trying to solve right now. Uh, and our first approach is a naive approach. We're just going to use nested, nested loops. And then I'll show you some potentially better ways to do it. OK, so we're iterating over the first array. We have that current value. And then um, now we're, iter uh, we're iterating over the second, the second array to make sure that that value is not inside of the first array. Am I missing a curly brace? I think I'm missing a curly brace. Uh, scrolling text and images is uh, the marquee tag, which, which technically works. Um, you can see, yeah, it's just a marquee tag. You can technically do uh, animated SVGs, because you can embed images over here. Visual J++. <laughs> what version of JavaScript? I think I have uh, Node version 13. Yeah, 13.5. And thanks for the follow, Strippies. Shrimp Yeah, you could try to wrap it in a script tag, but what ends up happening is the the, li the library I'm using just strips it out. <coughs> I like to tie my loops off with a square knot. Nice. <laughs> oh, and I got a new member, uh, Vishnu. I don't know if I... Oh, you know what? My sound is disabled. Um, much appreciated. Sorry about that. And I did not acknowledge it sooner. But welcome, Vishnu. Much appreciated. Let me turn my sound on. Um, and as a YouTube member, you get access to exclusive emotes. Um, if you click the emote menu here, you can do things like CJ thinking. Wait, there it is. <laughs> or the Yerba Mate can. I don't actually, I actually ran out of Yerba Mate. And I think I need to do a grocery delivery. Um, you could even do CJ Pixel. <laughs> so welcome. And then also if you join the Discord and link your YouTube account, you get access to special channels as well. So much appreciated. Uh, Philippe is asking about the difference between let and var. Um, for for beginners, <laughs> I would say it's, it, they're almost the same. The thing about var is it is not blocked scoped. It's uh, function scoped or global scoped, meaning when you define a let variable, it only exists within its block. So that this let variable is technically only going to exist within these curly braces, which is a block. And this one will only exist within these curly braces. Um, now, that's really useful in programming, and it avoids bugs because you potentially, if you have a different kind of scope where that variable can be changed outside of those curly braces, you could run into bugs where like other code is accessing or changing that variable. So that's the main difference, is let is block scoped. Um, and the difference between const and let is let can be reassigned. You'll notice here that we are actually reassigning the variable, whereas const cannot be reassigned. Now, technically, because it's a reference type, we can change the inner value, but we cannot reassign it. It, it will always be this, this array. We can just change what's inside the array. Wait, what? <laughs> will JS inside the SVG run? Probably not. I hope not. Oh, it didn't. Oh, well, it made sound on the stream, but I didn't hear it because I don't have my speakers on. Okay, thanks, Alka. Um, yeah, people are trying to trying to. I, you know what? I shouldn't reveal that kind of information, <laughs> like my Node version. Because <laughs> um, if you see that I'm using a, a specific version of Node, then you could uh, send some. I don't know. <laughs> we're we're gonna switch to Node 13 um, in a second. 
uh, how to start Quokka. So if you installed Quokka, press Command Shift P, that opens up the command palette, or Control Shift P if you're on Windows, and then search for Quokka, uh, start on current file. And that'll start, start it. <laughs> My joke was too funny, he almost died. <laughs> Um, just perks. Yeah, you got it. I am not a member. Yeah, it, it only works for members. <laughs> uh, using TypeScript can also help with bugs. It's true. So um, what I was mentioning helps with bugs in terms of scope. TypeScript could help with bugs in terms of uh, types and potentially some other things too. Hello, David. And hello, Miha. Welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, we're getting there. So we have our nested loop. Now we need to compare the current value to every value inside of B. Um, so we will say iterate. So we're iterating over B and see if the current value is in B. We'll say um, if current value um, is equal to B at that given index. Let's take a quick stretch. Um, so if current value is equal to B at J, um, then that means we don't want to push this value into the result array because it's in um, the opposite side. Pyramid of doom. <laughs> What's up, Majestic Guy? Have you, have you already been here? But welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, so if the current value is in the second array, we actually don't want to push it uh, into the array. Um, and so what I, what I kind of need is uh, some sort of way of, of saying that this for loop found the value in the other array, and so we shouldn't push it in. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, so one liner is going to be probably our second attempt at it. Right now, we're just solving it with for loops, and we're going to talk about uh, why you may or may not want to do that. Um, OK, so if it's in there, um, we need to do something. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a variable called, um, um, we basically need a variable that's either true or false that says whether or not the, the current value is in the second array. <laughs> um, I think you're like, technically it will render buttons, but you don't need the curly braces inside of the on click. Yeah. Am I the only guy that likes decrement instead of increment? I, I mean, they both have their uses. The difference between if statements and switch statements. Um, they both can pretty much be used in the same way. If statements can get really cumbersome if you have a whole bunch of cases, which is where switches can help out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Uh, and I'm about to explain why this is big O of into. But regardless, um, so let's call this uh, should include. And initially, we're going to say that this is true. So we have this current value in A. And before we iterate over B, we're just going to assume that we haven't seen it before. So should include is true. But if we see it inside of the second array, we're going to say should include equals false, meaning we shouldn't push it in. And I'm actually just going to use this break, break statement. So break will stop executing the for loop the moment it finds that value inside of the second array. So. This is a small optimization, but I'll talk about it in a second. It's, it's still not that great compared to what else we can do. So that's there. And then after we're done iterating, we can say if should include is true, um, then we push the current value into the result array. So I'll say result.push uh, current value, like so. And this should do it at the end of it all if we just return result. Uh, we have the answer. So um, we can see that when it passes an empty array, we give back an empty array. Um, we actually did the opposite. <laughs> so um, wait, let's see. I'm not removing them. I'm creating a, a brand new array. So if should include is true, then we're pushing the current value. Oh, no, no, I did it right. OK, because in this instance, we're removing all the threes from the array. So we revolt, result in four. Um, and then in this last one, uh, we passed an empty array. So we actually don't remove anything. And we end up with one, eight, and two. So we've done it. We figured it out. Um, I saw a, a chat uh, a little uh, lo lower down that asked, can I actually just do a of i? You, def you definitely can. Like the, this variable that I created right here, current value, 
You don't have to do that, but it does make the code a little bit more readable because otherwise you have to use the bracket no notation in multiple places. But technically, yes, that's what we're doing. We're comparing that value inside of the array to the value in the other array. Cool. So um, let's talk about why. <laughs> wait, what? Let's talk about why this is uh, um, a potentially not very performant solution, and the, really the reason is because of uh, nested loops. Um, so when you have a loop inside of a loop, this loop is essentially going to iterate for every value inside of this loop. And if if both of these arrays are the same length, then that's n times n. Uh, operations or n squared operations. Um, and, and in this case, Bayon has it. So because these two arrays technically have different lengths, it's not technically n squared, it is n times m. But if you ever see your code looking like this, you should start to wonder if there's a better way to do it. Um, because if those arrays are the same length, then it technically is n squared, and that's uh, more and more operations. So this idea of big O notation is it describes how the runtime changes as the input grows. And so for really small arrays, this is totally fine. Like if you have two arrays, they're both um, um, what do you call it? They're, they're both length three. That's not bad, right? Three times three is what nine? <laughs> is that nine? So that's nine operations. That's fine. But what if you had an array of length a thousand and another array of length a thousand? A thousand times a thousand is, I don't know, 10,000? A million? <laughs> it's a million, isn't it? Yeah, it's a million. So as your, as your arrays get longer and longer, the number of operations is, um, uh, is exponential. Is that the word we use here? It goes up like this. Quadratic. Quadratic? Oh, thank you, Agent Key. <laughs> um, is that what's the right word? Is it quadratic or is it n squared? Is quick maths. <laughs> so yeah. So um, and like I mentioned, quadratic. There we go. Oh come on! I I you know I gotta check on my capture card because this keeps happening. So for. Like we mentioned, for very small arrays, this is totally fine. And if you're writing this kind of code on the front end, you're probably going to be OK because you're not dealing with arrays with millions and millions of, of entries. But when you do, your code will get much slower. So, so math storm. <laughs> a thousand times a thousand? 10,000? No, it's a million. It is a million. I figured that out before I plugged it into the calculator. You can, you can clip it. Rewind it. I, b before I actually calculated it, I got it in my head. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not the best at math, but we can figure this out. Um, OK, so that this is the naive solution of, of nested for loops. Now, I'm going to show you uh, the one liner that, who was it that uh, showed us? Um, we'll find your name. Uh, Finrael. Uh, they recommended a one liner. And I'll show you how we do that with a filter and includes. Um, but it's a, it's a hidden nested loop. <laughs> and I'll show you why we should avoid that. So um, what we can do instead of this for loop is we can use a filter. Um, so I could create this function array diff, and we get uh, a and b. And really, what I want to do is I want to return a filtered array where all of the values in b are not uh, that are in a are not in the resulting array. <laughs> I'm not good at math. I'm the best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so. Um, what we can do is there's this built-in filter function in math, and if you're if you're new to programming, I would stop here. <laughs> like, uh, make sure you understand for loops. Make sure um, that this stuff is making sense before you move on to what we're about to do, because this can be a little tricky if you're if you're new to functions and higher order methods and stuff like that. But there's this function called filter that's built into arrays, where you can pass it another function that gives you each individual value that you can then um, if this function returns true, that value will show up in the new resulting array. But if this function returns false or a falsy value, uh, or a truthy value in the other case, then that value will show up in the resulting array. So what we can say right here is um, if b dot includes. So includes is another. Uh, it's not a higher order method, but it's another method built into arrays, and we can pass in value. And so this will return true if that value is included there. And so we want to not it. So we will say uh, filter over a for every value that is not included in b. And this works. 
Look at that, one line of code. It does exactly the same thing. But as Doc was mentioning down below, I think he mentioned index of, um, this is this is a uh, quadratic equation or like n times m solution in disguise, right? Um, this is uh, a b times. So the length of a times the length of b. <laughs> and so that's great. Um, there are a couple of other, other ways you could do it with higher order methods. Um, Let's think about it. No, no, fil filters the way it filters the way to go. But uh, someone just asked, "What's the best approach?" Here's the best approach. Uh, we solve it with a filter and a pre-computed set. Um, so the cool thing about a set is that it allows you to check and see if a value is in that set in constant time. So the reason that this is bad, this includes, is because it has to search over that entire array to see if it finds the value. So this this includes is actually doing this this right here it's doing that for loop it's just behind the scenes um but if we pre-compute a set we can then check to see if that set or that hash map yeah if that if it contains it and if it does then we're done and that then that this becomes just um or a big o of n n plus m yeah n plus m hello ziggy welcome <laughs> um let's see oh fun fun function is live that's good Am I sure it's just cold? What? <laughs> uh, Bayon mentioned something about their thesis. Let me see if I can find that message. Where did it go? OK, uh, in my thesis, I have an algorithm that runs big O of n squared. But since n will be at least 5,000, it doesn't mind. Or yeah, and it doesn't matter. So because we know that n is a smaller number, you don't really got to worry about it. But as that number gets bigger, that's what you got to be careful of. <laughs> Quick maths. Thanks for the follow, Gus. Thanks for the follow, Flaner. Um, and Philippe is asking, are lambda expressions also called lambda expressions in JavaScript? Typically, we don't call them lambda expressions, though they technically are. They're like inline functions. But the thing about it, though, in JavaScript, every function is a value that can be passed around. Um, in, in JavaScript, functions are first class citizens, um, which is why I don't think we call them lambdas. Somebody can correct me on that. But on, on other languages where functions aren't first class, that's why you call them lambdas, because you can just pass them around. But in JavaScript, you can pass any function around. Hash maps, yeah. <laughs> it was an epic rule. Um, oh, that's a good, good way to do it, Tester. So instead of using a filter, we could use a reduce. Let, let's implement it that way. Um, I'll show you all how to do this. And then we'll do it the, um, the, the best way, <laughs> or the, the, most, the most performant way. There's Python. Uh, if A is not in the list, remove it from the list. How do I get inline results? Uh, that's called Quaka. Quaka JS. Can someone throw the link to Quaka JS, please? Hello, Ziggy. Yep. So a set plus a filter is big O of M plus N. Um, if they were both the same length arrays, it would be big O of N plus N, which is 2N, which would simplify to N. But uh, in this case, they're different. So it's M plus N, which is way better. It's linear two linear functions um, versus uh, like a quadratic one. So includes should be kept for smaller arrays. That's the thing to think about. And at the beginning of the stream, someone asked about like, should I know data structures and algorithms for web development? This is where it comes in handy, right? Because if you're if you're building a front end app that like filters over data that th that's being displayed to the user, if you're doing this and your array gets really big, your UI is gonna start to get slow and you may not understand why. Um, but and but that's exactly why because of a nested loop and, and I'm what I'm about to show you if we get there <laughs> We're gonna get there um, is a way to speed this up and thanks for the follow GDG Nuremberg uh, That reduce wouldn't quite work because we still need an array uh, the cat is good the cat found uh, found its home Well, I found the cat's home <laughs> Yeah, so the big the difference starts to matter much sooner than you think all right, see you later, uh, uh, Kobe. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hello, Red Hat Banger, Ranger. Take care with repetitions. Right, in this case, it doesn't actually matter, but in some solutions, it will matter. You need to know the, the number of occurrences rather than just, is it in there? Oh, nice, Mia. Uh, Mia. Thanks for hanging out. And thanks for the follow, Red Hat Ranger. Drop that Lambda. <laughs> And thanks for the top follow, Tiny Moo Cow. Can we get some more cow drops? Um, there are quite a few cow followers today, which I appreciate. Are array methods slower than for loops? 
I think it depends on the JavaScript engine and the, and the implementation. Um, for, for what it's worth, it may not be that big of a difference. Doc could probably tell us like how much faster is a filter than a for loop, if it is, or how much slower is it. But I would say that's a kind of thing you probably don't have to worry about in front end development. But yeah. Yeah, Brooks is saying uh, we use them like lambdas, but they can be used as regular functions as well. Uh, I think I only type like 60 words per minute. I'm not a very fast typer. Oh, nice, Infi. <laughs> Hopefully you can figure it out. <laughs> I have not taken a drink in a while. Is that, do yeah, Doc says, array.include should make huge wiggly red underlines appear in your code. <laughs> Show us some kind of sorcery. It's not, it's not actually that bad. Um, drop is when you see these things falling here. <laughs> And thanks for the follow, Ed Cakes. Test for multiple occurrences. Yeah, so, um, and we, we can see in um, in the input that was provided, um, if there are multiple twos, there are still no twos that show up in the results. So we, we should be good to go here. And thanks for the follow, Carlos. Uh, Josh says, uh, should I go to computer science classes to understand more about coding structures or teach myself? Uh, it depends. I mean, if you have the time and the money to go to a university, why not? <laughs> but if um, if you're doing this in your spare time, there are plenty of online resources to teach yourself. It is just a little bit harder. Oh, good call, Bayon. We're, uh, we'll account for that. Okay, let's go ahead and write it. And actually, um, I'll put this here. This was provided by whoever provided this. Remind me your name, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you credit there. We'll talk about it in a second, but because I do have to go, we need to, we got to solve it in the more performant way. Uh, I am using view with Electron. Clash of code. <laughs> All right. This is uh, the third way of doing it. Filter with a pre-computed -pre set. Um, array diff, A and B. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're, we're still going to do two for loops, but they're not going to be nested. What we're going to do is first iterate over B to calculate the set. We're going to calculate all unique values that are in B, and then later on, we can reuse that. So here's how we do that. We, we still need to iterate over B. Um, and I'm going to actually solve this with for loops. You could do this with a reduce instead, um, but because there are like newbie people watching, I'll do it with a for loop because you too can do this at home without knowing about map and filter and reduce and stuff like that. Oh, that's true. We don't even have to loop. Thank you, doc. <laughs> okay. It's even easier than I said. Um, so I can say, um, uh, what do we call these? Remove values. We can just say a new set and then we pass in B done. <laughs> so, uh, what this does, and actually let me log it, uh, remove values. Uh, dot values. Um, oh, it's an iterator. Well, we can spread it into an array <laughs> just, just to show you what we get back. Um, so you, when a set is a certain type of data structure, and when you learn about algorithms and data structures, you'll see that why sets are useful, but a set um, can only will only hold on to unique values. Yeah, and so uh, what we've done here is we've said, let's create a set out of this second uh, array here. And with a set, you have some built-in methods. So after you pass in that array, you then have some methods that where you can check. You can say, uh, remove values dot has the value three. And that will give you back whether or not that set includes that value. But the cool thing about this method has is that it's a constant time lookup. So set under the hood is, is like a hash map and that you can instantly just check and see if you have that value. Whereas includes needs to search across the entire array. That's the major difference here. Um, so now that we have it as a set, uh, easy enough. Uh, we actually can just reuse this, this filter thing here. And instead of doing b.includes, I can say um, if not remove values.has. And it works in exactly the same way. Um, but in this case, we have now taken that nested for loop and turned it into a constant time operation. So technically, this is big O of uh, n plus m. We have two different array length arrays. But this, this filter now runs a whole lot faster because it doesn't have to loop inside of the filter. 
Um, yeah, and uh, here's the other thing. You don't necessarily have to, to use a set. Sets are really useful, and they, they were introduced in ES 2015. But also, you could create an object where the keys are the values, and the values are just true. Uh, just true. So technically, we could have created an object that says, like, four, true, uh, three, true. And this is now an object of things we want to remove from the array. Uh, my object set, we'll call it that. And then instead of that has method, we can just say if my object set bracket four, and then um, that'll tell us if it's inside of there or not. True. So uh, under the hood, a set sort of kind of works like this. It's a little bit different, um, but technically if the set didn't exist, you could still use a JavaScript object to behave like a set. Is it unordered? I actually don't know. Uh, we could check. I'm not going to check right now, but I believe it keeps the same order as when you put the values into the set. Somebody can let me know. Um, I'm learning programming by creating my own new social media app. I'm just seeking a fun project to work on. Yeah, I don't really know. Uh, Elu says, uh, what's up? <laughs> I tried to study the docs. And by the end of the day, I really understood more than in a week by tutorial. So thanks. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm glad it worked out for you. Uh, for a lot of new programmers, it, it takes a while before you can get used to the docs. But once you can get over that hump, it, it is actually much more efficient to learn from the documentation than it is from tutorials. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, basically, because in algebra, algebra, set theory, you can't include redundance in a set definition. Yeah, so set automatically removes all duplicates. That's another useful thing that you can, a way to remove duplicates from an array in JavaScript is by using a set. We have to master math to be a developer. No. <laughs> I would rewind the stream, and you could see me struggling with this problem. So um, this problem, and again, you just, just rewind the stream. Um, this problem we solved without really knowing much about math. We kind of just broke down the problem description and turned it into a loop of successive subtractions. And that's really all we needed to know. Um, then I tried to figure out logs and I did some calculations, not calculations, but like some, I did some algebra to try like simplify equations. And eventually we came up with this equation, but you absolutely do not need to know that to be a programmer. So that's, that's my, my thoughts on that. <laughs> the job bot is now open source. Nice, empty. <laughs> oh yeah, this extension is called um, Quaka. Quaka JS. Somebody probably provided a link, and if you did, didn't, somebody should. <laughs> uh, in Python, they are unordered. Yeah, I don't know. M plus in log in, because the set orders. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Quaka, that's the one. Click that link. All right, now I actually know what a hash map is. Been in college for a while and I didn't really understand. Yeah, so this, this is the thing that I really like about JavaScript is that the JavaScript object is so many things that you learn in other programming language. A JavaScript object can be used to create a set. It can be used to create a hash map. It can be used to create a dictionary. Um, the JavaScript object is very, very versatile. And once you figure that out, a lot of things that you're used to doing in other programming languages will make a bit more sense in JavaScript. Yeah, clash of code. <laughs> uh, I don't have time, but we'll, we'll take a look next week at Omnibool. McDonald's or KFC? McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, Brooks says, I often spin up experiments uh, to try little bits of code before integrating it. So you could do that to figure out is a set ordered, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we could look at the docs, but I, I actually don't feel like doing that right now. <laughs> so the, the big O notation for this solution, um, what, what I initially mentioned was big O of M plus N. N plus M. So N is the length of the array A, and B is the length of the array M. Um, and now the reason that is, is I'm, I'm saying we can create a set from an array in uh, big O of M, one iteration of the array. What Bayon, I think, just mentioned is that like in C++, um, creating a set technically, if the set is ordered, then it's not, um, it's not a constant just iteration of the array. Uh, each insertion potentially takes a little bit longer because it keeps it sorted. Um, if it's not sorted, it's just M. If it is sorted, then it might need to be in log of N. But this is much better than N squared. <laughs> 
And thanks for the follow, uh, Zowls. Click this link. <laughs> That's funny. Project Euler, not today. And good morning, disk. Uh, a JS set is not sorted. Okay, so if it's not sorted, then that means most likely that it is constant time, or not constant time, it is, it takes, it has to iterate over the array once to create the set, but it's just one iteration. So the the main thing, if, if we go back to performance, this iterates once to create the set, and this iterates once to get rid of all the values. This iterates once, but Inside of that iteration, it iterates again. So that's what gives us that uh, m times n complexity. And similarly, this is more code to, to do the same thing. I write my thesis in JavaScript, and a guy that comes from C++ is frustrated when you can't control the types. Yeah. I actually love it. It's very freeing. <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> well, thank you, Ilya. Uh, do I have any recommendations for a good but not too complicated project for a portfolio? JavaScript and React. Um, really anything that talks to a backend API, uh, backend API, you don't necessarily have to create it yourself. Um, but you can find some APIs to integrate with and, uh, make sure you have multiple pages. You could integrate with something like Firebase to do authentication. Um, yeah, but really for a portfolio piece, you really just want to show off that, you know, react. So can you create components? Can you control state? Uh, most likely, you would want to use something like Redux for state management or some other state managed library to show that you know how to use that because that's usually what employers are looking for. Um, hopefully that helped. What's the difference between a set, a dictionary, and a hash map? So a set um, similar to a dictionary and a hash map can, can only have unique... Well, actually, no. A set uh, has unique, unique values, unique keys. Um, and you can't... Um, store a value alongside that key. So a set only stores the keys. A dictionary stores a key and a value, and they are unique keys in that dictionary. A hash map stores keys and values, but, well, actually, yeah, the keys still have to be unique. But technically, you could have collisions on the hash insertion. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the VS Code extension is called Quokka.js. What's the difference between a chicken? <laughs> If JavaScript had a slogan, what would it be? Come on in, the water's fine. Or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> JavaScript is very inviting. Anybody can do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because inserting into an ordered data structure is in login. That's fun to think about. Like, um, you're, you, you have a data structure, and every time you insert data, you put it in the right place so that it is sorted. So that way, in the future, you don't have to resort it. Um, but... You, you pay the price up front of in login. This is still approximated to big O of n. Yeah. Um, I mean, technically it is n plus m because they're, the, the two arrays have different lengths, um, but it's still linear in both cases. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like the JavaScript object can be used in all of those ways. <laughs> um, can, you can differ them by set operations. I don't know if we have that in JavaScript. This is true. <laughs> in C++, you control everything. In JavaScript, there's a lot you don't control, but that's okay, because we don't need to control everything to build web apps. I've heard that sorted arrays iterate faster. Not that I know of. You still got to go from the beginning to the end. <laughs> it's true, Enfy. Every language calls dictionaries, objects, maps, hash maps, sets, all these different things. This theme is called Just Black. All right. Um, I, I've, I'm streaming every day this week, but usually uh, Wednesday night, so in about eight hours, <laughs> I'm going to stream again, and that's my normal stream time. But I woke up, was ready to stream, so. Sets and maps are significantly faster than raw objects, especially with mutable uh, uh, collections. And you don't have issues with magic strings. That's a good point, Doc. And Doc always recommends me to use sets and maps instead of objects. But like I mentioned, if you're just getting started and you didn't know about them, an object would work for most cases. Yeah, I went. I was the opposite. I went from um, like Java and C++ and C and C Sharp to JavaScript. So I, I, I worked in statically typed, very strict languages for a long time, and JavaScript just felt freeing which is why I don't actually like TypeScript that much. I still use TypeScript. It makes sense sometimes, <laughs> but I don't, uh, in things I'm building for myself, I don't use it because it's freeing. 
Apollo client with React. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, a lot of companies that use React also use GraphQL, so it'd be good to showcase that you know how to use Apollo client to communicate with a GraphQL backend. I think that makes sense. C++ doesn't have a good type, type system. Um, interesting. That's an opinion. <laughs> Uh, I have not planned. Um, we had mentioned it a while back, but we probably need to set that up because that would be fun. Have I thought about learning Arabic? I have not. I've never, yeah, I've never thought about like a, a right to left language. Um, that would be interesting. JavaScript slogan. Anything goes. No, come on in. The water's fine. That's the slogan. <laughs> in eight hours, I will be streaming again. Yeah. Yeah, if you ever use Discord JS, they have their own collection type, which I didn't realize at first, which made things really hard. <laughs> but once you figure it out, it's good. I think what makes sorted faster is that unsorted is branch prediction. I don't know, but <laughs> we are done. Uh, and actually, let's go ahead and submit this to Code Wars. I'm gonna take a quick stretch. Uh, I'm going to stream again in eight hours. Set a timer for eight hours. Uh, okay, Google, set a timer for eight hours. Hey, Alexa, set a timer for eight hours. <laughs> I don't know if you heard my Alexa, but that actually worked. Uh, did that did that trigger anyone's Google or um, or Alexa? But I will be streaming again in eight hours. <laughs> I triggered yours. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. We're going to submit this solution. It triggered your Google Home. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Come on in. The water's fine, but with promise. Promise. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I noticed. The, the reason is that um, YouTube live chat uses a polling mechanism. So those chats technically came in earlier from the user, but the my backend received them after, which is why they're being like shoved into place. And I, I just made that update last night. So now they're sorted by the time f coming from I, the YouTube server or the Twitch server. <laughs> it triggered me. Oh, Alka. Okay. <laughs> and thank for, thanks for the follow, uh, Fantastic Lamb. Um... Cool. And so uh, we showed includes. In this solution, they're using index of. It's a very similar thing. Um, index of. Here we go. This person used a set. That's good. Um, index of. <laughs> so you may. Not, I, I actually don't ever take advantage of this, but on Code Wars, you technically can require in Lodash, and there is a built in uh, array diff function. Um, cool. All right. So we're done there. Let's find somebody to raid. Um, InstaFluff is streaming. We might actually do that. Let's see uh, who's live on the live coders team. Full stack live. Code rushed. We'll raid InstaFluff. We haven't raided them in an entire week. An entire week. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, who's Nibbles IO? Nibbles IO. Thanks for the follow, Savage Mate. We're going to raid InstaFluff. <laughs> oh, he's making a programming language? That sounds fun. But we, I already said we're going to raid InstaFluff next time. Next time. Um, HTTPS colon slash slash twitch.tv slash coding garden anybody watching on youtube if you in in the coming weeks if you want to continue watching me live be sure to follow me on twitch because i'm going to be exclusively going live there instead of youtube so be sure to drop a follow and if you come over right now we are going to participate in a good old-fashioned raid and so that's where we take the viewers of one stream and send them over to the viewers of another stream and uh, we're going to do that right now thanks for the follow uh, nemi kuro InstaFluff is a fantastic streamer. He's If you just stick around in his channel for at least 5-10 minutes, you're, you're going to have a better day. You're going to feel better about yourself. Uh, you're going to feel better about others. He's a great place. 
Um, and CJ recursion. Yeah, it's me. All the way back. <laughs> Um, actually, let's let's come up with a, uh, a a cool InstaFluff related raid message. So we've got that. Let's do like a doggy because it's fluffy, and a rabbit because it's also fluffy, and then a heart, and then a seedling. All right, this is our raid message. So if you uh, copy and paste that. That's our raid message. And then here's here's the other thing we're going to do. Uh, whenever we go over there, type... Because uh, he has he has the drop game too. So InstaFluff invented the drop game. But also when we go over there, let's drop seedlings. So you can do exclamation mark drop and then do a seedling. So when we go into his channel, we're going to make a bunch of seedlings drop. All right. Are we ready? <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> so copy paste that message. And we're going to do the drop when we go over there. All right. Oh, that's the wrong thing. There we go. Alrighty, everyone. This was super fun. Um, we got to talk about sets and maps and dictionaries and run times and we did log rhythms. This was a great. This was a great time. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me. Um, and like I said, tune in in about eight hours for another stream. We're going to be doing some much more difficult programming. Um, so that'll be fun. <laughs> and wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.